fire. One bullet hit the floor and ricocheted into a wall, but no one was hit. We talked with some concerned parents. Take a listen. Well, it's scary. You know, you, um, it was, I, it's not something you, you hear about it on the news a lot, but it's scary to think that it's happening at your school. Well, something bad could have happened. Thank, thankfully, nothing did. Now, deputies did arrest that student and took him to the hospital for some pre-existing medical issues, but he's going to be okay. He is facing multiple charges, including domestic violence and attempting to disarm a police officer. This student is expected in court today. Reporting live at Oxford High School, Brian Abel, 7 Action News. All right, thank you, Brian. By the way, it's the time now. Today is a critical day for public schools across the state. It is count day for nearly 900 districts and charter schools. Parents, very important that your kids are in class today, and that's because it is one of only two days during the school year where attendance determines how much state aid each school receives for the year. Now, today's count will be making up 90% of this year's funding. The other count day in February will account for 10%. Also happening today, a lot of Michigan students will bypass buses and take part in a very special day. More than 300 schools are expected to participate in the annual Walk to School Day. The event encourages kids to stay healthy, and it also helps parents determine safe routes to class. Teachers and community leaders are also planning to join in. 508 direct targets still ahead. The two Midwest states that saw the brunt of the politically divisive Facebook ads linked to Russia. First, we do want to take a live look over Southfield for you. There's the quadrangle at Lawrence Tech lit up there in the circle. Of course, we're going to have your weather and traffic with Keenan and Anne Marie coming up in seven minutes or less. You're watching 7 Action News on this Wednesday. Today's forecast is all about the rain. We have showers and thunderstorms already lighting up the radar. Now, we're still dry locally right now, but you can see the line of uh, showers and storms uh, stretching from Alpena, Mackinac, Traverse City to Cadillac. And I do want to point out uh, that even south of that, uh, near Grand Rapids and Battle Creek, we're seeing showers develop. Nothing heavy outside right now, but as we move on throughout the day, uh, this rain marches towards us for the morning. I'll track it into the uh, metro area coming up in seven minutes or less. We do have one crash this morning. It comes to us on the eastbound side of 96, right at the Southfield Freeway. And you can see those flashing lights right behind me early enough that it's not going to slow you down, but we'll take another peek of this in seven minutes or less. Thank you, Emory. 512, almost 513. We are following some new developments this morning. Yeah, we've learned that some of those Russian ads on Facebook were specifically aimed at voters in Michigan and Wisconsin. Both were crucial states for President Trump to win the uh, election. And this is according to four CNN sources with direct knowledge of the situation. Some of the ads went after key demographic groups and were quite divisive. Some clearly focused on swaying public opinion and promoted anti-Muslim messages. 513 coming up, helping homeless veterans in Detroit. The essential items that will be handed out to those in need. And here's a quick check of the latest numbers on Wall Street. The Dow is up just over 84 points. The Nasdaq climbed close to 15 points. The S&P 500 is also up around 5 points. You're watching 7 Action News this morning. All right, welcome back. It is 516 as we take a live look over Ann Arbor on this uh, Wednesday morning. Keenan, the uh, temperatures that we're having right now, is it too early to link those to a warmer winter? Uh, actually, no, actually, I went back and I uh, did some research and the really warm September's have often been followed by really warm uh, winters. In fact, uh, the September we had is like a top 20 September right. since uh, we've had records and many of those top 20 uh, winters are September's have been followed by an above average winter. So that's good news if you don't want uh, to have to deal with a lot of bitter cold. And it doesn't mean we're not going to get cold and we'll certainly get some shots of Arctic air in. But the trend uh, would have me thinking that it's going to be a milder winter. Right now it's mild outside 60s and 70s. If you're waking up this morning, in Detroit 72, Troy and Pontiac are at 72. Our warm spot is Monroe at 73. Our cool spot and please hope their air quotes and a little sarcasm in the voice 68 degrees right now in Ann Arbor. That is our cool spot. That's above average for this time of year in terms of our daily highs. Typically, we're right around 67 degrees or so. And these are temps outside right now. 15, 20, 25 degrees warmer than yesterday. It feels really good. We are not going to warm up a whole lot more. Temperatures stay in the 70s at best today uh, because of uh, the rain cover, a rainfall, cloud cover, and ultimately a cold front. 
working its way in. Winds out of the south here 5 to 15 miles an hour and you can see the clouds building in trying to develop some showers. Nothing really good outside right now. Back out here to the west for Kalamazoo, Hastings, you're starting to see showers develop and can't rule out thunder as we move on throughout the day. In fact, there's a line of showers and thunderstorms up here a little closer to the cold front. Now we're looking at temps in the 70s, 70s all across the lower peninsula here. But by the time you cross over Lake Michigan behind the front, Green Bay right behind the front is at uh, 64. Look at Ironwood now down to 46 degrees. So cooler air is on the way. We'll be down in the 50s overnight tonight, about 20 degrees cooler uh, than we are right now, 15 to 20 degrees. So we're dry at the moment, but as we move on throughout the day, you see spotty showers here developing by the tail end of the morning drive. That's when we'll have showers moving in. So if you leave early, you're dry. If you get to work between 830 and 9, there are going to be some showers around even when kids are walking to school today for the annual walk to school certainly going to be uh, some rain showers around and you can see heavy rain for the morning hours quieting down then spotty showers around this afternoon. Look at the clearing. This is now three o'clock back out by Grand Rapids. That's the cooler, drier, more refreshing air coming in, taking the rain chances away and ultimately we'll look for clear skies overnight tonight. Today, look for a high near 76 degrees, cloudy, mild, a 70% rain chance and a chance for thunder there. 54 clear skies overnight tonight. Tomorrow, look for a high near 74 degrees, mix of sun and clouds. Rain back for Friday, a 50% chance at rain with a high of 68, a 60% chance at rain on Saturday. Also, rain around for that Michigan Michigan State game Damn. Sunday. The better of the two weekend days. There's no all man. It's football. Heck it doesn't yeah. matter. They will play. Be a well, good game. You know, yeah. it'd be Remember all man if it were baseball. The rain and yeah. it'll be something you can toot your horn to and yeah. be muddy. Yeah, look at that running game. If you got that right. wet weather around, that's yeah, football. That too. That As you're heading out this morning, no wet conditions just yet. That's the good news, but we do have a crash. So we're going to take a quick peek outside with your seven first alert traffic camera. I want to explain exactly what you're looking at because we have quite a few lanes here this morning. So what you're seeing is the local lanes. That's where these flashing lights are coming from. But because we do have that ramp off to the other side, the right of that, it kind of looks like it is the express lanes. So I wanted to clarify that is the right shoulder of the local lanes of 96 eastbound right at the Southfield Freeway. The good news is I wanted to bring in our map so you can see traffic flows here. It's not slowing things down at all. It's early enough, so we're looking quite good. I'll keep a close eye on it and I'll let you know as soon as that has cleared. Thank you, Amory. 520 is the time now. An event's going to get underway today aimed at helping homeless veterans in Metro Detroit. It's called the 2017 Homeless Veterans Standout, and it's taking place at the Detroit Rescue Mission. Now, this event will begin at 9 o'clock this morning, and it'll last until 5 p.m. Soul for Vets will be a key part of the event, giving veterans a chance to get new and used shoes. The Secretary of State Mobile Office will also be on hand, encouraging people to apply for identification cards and also driver's licenses. The first stand down was organized back in 1988, and since then, the events have been used by veteran organizations to provide services to veterans, especially homeless veterans and special events across the country. 521 still ahead. Google's getting ready for a big announcement today. A look at some of the products the company is expected to unveil. Plus new evidence, the information now at the center of the investigation into the death of a fraternity pledge at LSU. That story is next in your GMA First Look. A woman complaining of unsafe living conditions turns to 7 Action News for help. What we found inside this apartment building and how they responded to getting things fixed. 7 is taking action for you. Got a consumer problem you need solved? Call our team today, starting at 4. First look, 
Louisiana State University police say text messages are at the center of the investigation of the alleged hazing death of 18-year-old pledge Max Groover, dying just a month into his freshman year. Newly released search warrants allege Groover and other pledges received a group text telling them to attend Bible study. All of this at the frat house. Now, police say that was code for a kind of question and answer session. Wrong answers meant more alcohol. Investigators say according to several witnesses, the pledges were forced to drink in excess. Police say sometime after midnight, Groover was highly intoxicated and was placed on the couch. But it wasn't until 11 hours later when someone went to check on him and could not tell if he was breathing. And we'll have much more on what these new search warrants reveal coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Candace Gibson, ABC News, New York. All right, so here's a look at the uh, dry forecast. Mostly cloudy skies, rain developing, moving in from the west towards the, uh, for the second half of the morning drive. Temperatures upper 60s, low 70s outside right now. 76 degrees on the way home. The rain is exiting for the evening drive from west to east. So if you uh, work or live uh, south and east, you're going to hold on to that rain through a good chunk of the evening drive. Farther north and west, if you're in Howe or Wixom, uh, you'll start to dry out. Uh, we are looking at a chance for thunder today, but no severe thunderstorms. Storms not today, not tomorrow. Another chance of rain moves in on Friday, but those will just be showers. No thunder, no big storms in your forecast. Well, I'm keeping a close eye on that one issue this morning that comes to us on 96 East on again. This is the local side of the highway and it was blocking the left lane. Initially, they've moved things off to the right shoulder. So that is the good news as you're passing through the Southfield freeway. Take a look outside. You'll see those flashing lights. They make quite a scene as it's so dark this morning. Now this right here again is that exit ramp. This is the local side of 96 eastbound and that again is the right shoulder. We'll check all of the roads again in just a bit. Thank you very much, Amory. 524 today, Google's expected to unveil several new products. Yeah, we're told the company will show off the next generation of Pixel smartphones. The Pixel 2 will cost $650, while the XL model will be $850. Apparently, the phones will also include a new squeeze function that opens an app just by gripping the sides of your phone. Other rumored products said to be unveiled are the Home Mini, the Daydream View, and Google's premium Pixel, bo Pixel Book. The announcement is set to take place at noon. Squeeze. I'm thinking about that squeeze function. Yeah. I mean, how many apps, <laughs> I wonder, does that control? Think of right. the number of apps you have on your phone. You got to be able to choose which ones you open, and then okay, you still yeah. have to touch the phone right. after that. So I'm curious to, as to how that works. Yeah, to see it, to understand yeah. it. All right, 525. Still to come in our next half hour, we are following stories from Detroit. Sterling Heights and Pontiac tackling an epidemic. The approach Warren Mayor Jim Fouts is expected to take to combat a growing issue. Plus, the court battle continues for a Metro Detroit mother. Why a fight over her child's health could land her in jail. Also, we're going to take a look at the morning's top stories before you head out the door. You're watching 7 Action News on this Wednesday. For you, 7 Action News starts right now. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. It is 529 October 4th. Time to get you caught up in the morning's top stories. We start with 7 First Alert Meteorologist Keenan Smith. When's the rain going to move in, Keenan? Uh, still a couple of hours away, but by the end of the morning drive, we'll have some of those showers uh, wetting our doorsteps here. You can actually see the line of showers and thunderstorms stretching from Milwaukee up through the northern lower, but we do have some development back up by Battle Creek and Grand Rapids. Some of those are the showers that'll come working in. Right now, though, still clear. Trying to develop a little shower or sprinkle here, but nothing uh, that's going to slow you down if you're stepping outside in short order. 60s and 70s outside, Adrian 69, Ann Arbor 68 degrees, and Detroit were at 72. The weather impact today, we're going to put it in the moderate zone. Rain chances develop. Rain is likely. Thunderstorms are possible. No severe weather outside, just slowing you down by uh, keeping the roads wet throughout the day. Look for a high of 76. Fortunately, no wet roads at this point, but we do have a closure as you were heading out. We brought this to you as breaking news yesterday on Action News at noon. We had a truck, another truck hit a bridge. Yes, this time in Detroit, and it's the Junction Street Bridge. You can see it's shut down right here. The good news is I-75 has reopened under that bridge. For the time being, you'll want to use Clark or Dragoon in Livernois. Just a reminder, those are one-way streets, so you'll have to use one or the other as you're heading out this morning. That's our major issue and our major problem this morning. We'll check the roads again in just a bit. Thanks, Amory. The girlfriend of the Las Vegas shooter, Mary Lou Danley, she flew into Los Angeles from the Philippines last night, and she was greeted by FBI agents eager to find out what she knows. 
She's now named a person of interest. We'll have much more on this story in just a few minutes, including a look at dramatic body camera video from responding officers showing the moments they search for the gunman. Two people are accused of keeping a disabled woman locked in a shed to sell her for sex. Investigators say Misty George and Michael Welch of Macomb Township are charged with human trafficking and prostitution. They're accused of taking out ads online and investigators say they forced the woman to have sexual encounters with men for money. She was kept in a shed. We're learning more this morning about what happened moments before a gun went off inside a school. A struggle between a student and an Oakland County Sheriff's deputy led to the firearm going, going off. This happened at Oxford High School Tuesday afternoon. The teen is facing multiple charges, including domestic violence and attempting to disarm a police officer. Classes are expected to go on as scheduled at the school today. Well, today is school count day in Michigan, a big day for students to be in the classroom. Attendance helps determine how much state aid schools will receive for the year. Today's count will make up 90% of this year's funding. The other 10% is determined by the first count day in February. 532 and right now we want to update you on the massacre on the Las Vegas Strip. This morning FBI agents are focusing on the shooter's girlfriend Mary Lou Danley to find out what she knows. They met her last night, late last night at LAX when she got off a plane from the Philippines. They have several questions for her, including why the gunman recently sent $100,000 to the Philippines. President Trump and First Lady Melania Trump will be spending today in Las Vegas. They're going to meet with survivors and they're also going to recognize heroes. The Daily Mail released pictures from inside of the hotel room showing guns and ammunition everywhere. Police confirmed they're real. The fact that he had the, the type of weaponry and the amount of weaponry in that room, um, it was pre-planned extensively. For this individual to take it upon himself to create this chaos and harm is unspeakable. Police say they found nearly 50 guns in the hotel and at his home, along with thousands of rounds of ammunition. The coroner clarified that the 59th person death toll includes the gunman. Well, this morning, police body camera video shows us the tense moments as police officers scoured the area for the gunman. Investigators released this video last night, and you can see officers duck down behind a wall that faces the Mandalay Bay. That was right after the first round of near constant gunfire from the 32nd floor. It was absolute chaos. Hey, you guys, get down! Go that way! Get out of here! There's gunshots! Now, later in the video, the officers hide behind a patrol car. The undersheriff narrates the video saying they're trying not to get shot, and you can barely hear them over the hail of gunshots. And this is a story we'll, of course, continue to stay on top of. You can count on 7 Action News on air, the 7 app, and WXYZ.com for continuing coverage of the massacre on the Strip. Well, this is a story we've been following from the very beginning. Vaccinate your child or go to jail. That's the choice today for a mom in Ferndale after a judge's order. Now, 7 Action News reporter Brian Abel is live for us this morning to get us up to speed on where the story stands now. Brian. Yeah, Rebecca Bredo will be in jail this morning if she does not vaccinate her child. This according to an Oakland County judge. Now, the mother of two has been caught in both a custody as well as a differing of opinions between her and her ex-husband over their child and his vaccination plan. One of the conditions of Bredo getting primary custody, she must vaccinate. Bredo says this isn't about pro or anti-vaccinations, but rather a mother's choice of what's best for her child. She says she's done the research and was initially vaccinating her, vaccinating her son and spacing out the injections, but stopped at the group vaccine phase. Her ex-husband was initially on board when they were still married, but that changed and Bredo has been weighing her legal options ever since the judge's order. In Michigan, it's one of 17 states that does allow religious, personal, or medical exemptions for parents who choose to delay or skip vaccinations, but according to court documents. The child's father wants his son vaccinated. Bredo said she'd rather sit behind bars and stand up for what she believes in than give in to something she strongly doesn't believe in. How long she could be behind bars? Well, that's up for the court to decide. That will happen today. We will be in that courtroom and provide you all the updates both on air as well as online. For now, reporting live, Brian Abel, 7 Action News. All right, we'll see what happens. Thank you, Brian. We do have some new information coming in this morning about two men accused of carjacking people near the MGM Casino in downtown Detroit. And the men are now behind bars. Police say these guys, Kenneth Gardner and Damon Washington, Damon Washington, deliberately caused car crashes to steal the vehicles. 
This happened three times last week, police say. Surveillance video showed the suspects in a red Dodge Charger following people as they left a casino on 3rd Avenue. Police say that that video also showed the license plate, which helped them track down the suspects. A Macomb County judge could find herself facing jail time. Judge Catherine Steenland is under investigation for her alleged involvement in a hit and run. Police say the district court judge left the scene of a crash in Roseville last week. No one was injured in the crash, but another vehicle was damaged. So far, no charges have been filed, but if she is charged, she faces up to 90 days behind bars. The search is on for a suspect in a bar stabbing in downtown Detroit. Police say that the man seen in the surveillance video taken on September 23rd got into a bar brawl with several employees on Monroe Street. Now we're told the suspect drew a knife and stabbed a 32 year old man. Fortunately, the victim did survive. Now, if you know who and where the suspect might be, please call Detroit police. Well, this morning, the death toll from Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico sits at 34, more than double what it was the same time yesterday. Puerto Rico's governor announced the increase shortly after President Trump left the island. The president met with leaders and survivors, and in a Fox News interview, he suggested the U.S. wipe out Puerto Rico's $70 billion in debt to help the island recover. One woman says she appreciates the help so far, but she says they need more. We are as grateful as people from Louisiana should be or as people from Houston should be, or as people from Florida should be. We're American citizens. Yeah, many of those three million Americans who live there still have no power, no water or cell service. The Trump administration also granted Puerto Rico a waiver to let people use food stamps for prepared and fast food. 1.3 million Puerto Ricans rely on food stamps. The Trump administration is forcing 15 Cuban diplomats to leave the U.S. over alleged sonic attacks. Leaders say hurt 22 American workers in Havana. Those diplomats now have six days to leave the U.S. The states say that it's also bringing embassy workers home from Cuba by this Friday. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson says that Cuba broke the terms of a treaty by failing to protect Americans on its soil. Cuba called the move hasty and inappropriate. A spokesperson for Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump denies the pair moved private email accounts to a Trump organization server. USA Today says it reviewed Internet records that it says show the pair moved those accounts. It says the transfer happened right after news broke that Kushner used a private account for official White House business. Kushner's lawyer said that all official emails on private accounts were already sent to the White House to be preserved. Time now is 538. The mayor of Warren says that he has a possible solution to the horrible crisis of overdose deaths. Yeah, Mayor Tim Fouts posted on Facebook last night that he'll have a major announcement today involving the heroin opioid epidemic. He says 2015 to 2016 overdose deaths in Warren soared by 400 percent. That's another record year for the crisis in Warren. And we have no word yet on what time Mayor Fouts will make that announcement, but we will bring it to you as soon as he does. Well, it was all smiles between a teenager and the woman who saved his life at a restaurant several weeks ago. Yeah, Susan Pendigraf met Robert Brown III for the first time after saving his life. This happened in late August when Brown and his father were finishing their breakfast at the Country Cabin restaurant in Sterling Heights. The 15-year-old went into cardiac arrest. Susan quickly jumped in and began CPR, saving the young man's life. If it wasn't for Susan, I wouldn't be able to see my little cousin or my um, coaches and my family members. So I just want to tell her thank you again. I'm just thankful every day that I was able to do that and be there for him and maybe for someone else someday. What's even more amazing is Susan just finished getting her CPR certification in July. Also, the restaurant where Robert went into cardiac arrest, they're having a fundraiser or they had a fundraiser. and They raised more than $800 to put toward his medical bills. Well, that is a wonderful thing that the restaurant did, and it was so great. She had just been certified. Right. I, I bet they maintain a relationship uh, for years to come. Yeah, I think so. Time now, 540. Well, the Pistons preseason tips off tonight at Little Caesars Arena. Check out the Meet the Pistons event last night. Fans got their first look at the team and, of course, the new state-of-the-art stadium. Tonight, the Pistons will be taking on the Charlotte Hornets. The Atlanta Hawks will be in town on Friday, and the Indiana Pacers will come on Monday. Now, you can still get tickets for all three preseason home games. Game time for all of them is 7 p.m. 540 still ahead, getting ready for the rivalry where you can hear from some Michigan to Michigan State greats ahead of the big game.
Plus Ford says they'll slash costs all while focusing more on electric vehicles, what this means for consumers and workers. Next, we'll take a closer look. And although uh, 7 First Alert radar is becoming more and more active, the roads right now are still dry. Temperatures are near 70 degrees, mostly cloudy and quite mild. We'll track the rain and thunderstorms from the west side of the state into Metro Detroit in seven minutes or less. Good deal. First, we do want to take a quick peek out at the roads for you. This is I-96 and the Southfield Freeway right now. No issues to report here, but Amory LaFlame is tracking at least one big problem this morning and any other accidents. She'll have an update in seven minutes or less. Welcome back. 544 Ford is making big news today with a plan to cut billions of dollars from its operating costs. And that's not all. 7 Action News reporter Matthew Smith is live at Ford headquarters in Dearborn. Matt, how is this going to affect Ford's lineup? Well, Malcolm, we're really talking about this twofold. One, they're actually going to cut down on vehicles in general. Two, they're going to cut down on options. Now, believe it or not, uh, we got this door open for a reason here. The situation is Ford actually has some cars where they build multiple interiors, multiple options, both at the engine, with the car doors, with everything inside behind the wheel. One model, the Fusion, they have 35,000 plus options for it. They want to cut that down to 96 big change, right? You can see how this can actually save them on production costs. But the real question to a lot of our viewers out there is, what is this going to look like to both consumers and those who actually work for Ford? Well, the real answer is it's too soon to tell. A lot of these details come from a presentation given to investors. We know investors and vehicles are going to be cut from Ford's lineup, but we don't know what ones those will be. Uh, we do know that the new strategy will include a focus on two things, big trucks and electric cars. In fact, this mirrors a recent move by General Motors, their competition. Ford is now doubling down on electric cars, saying a third of its money they spend on combustible engines is now going to be shifted to electric car tech. That's in addition to its multi-billion dollar investment earlier this year. But the overall goal is to cut costs. And how much? Uh, trying $14 billion over five years. $4 billion is expected to come out of the production costs. We talk about things like cutting down on the types of models available. The other $10 billion is expected to come from new supply chains and material costs. At the end of the day, the key word here is fit. Ford is looking to become a more fit company. We're outside the world headquarters here because this is a multi-year plan. So what we see here coming out of Dearborn it may take a few years. They're hoping, though, this spurs investors and sees that stock price continue to move up in the short term. We're live in Dearborn this morning. Matthew Smith, 7 Action News. All right. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, 